This is Andy Tube, and in this video, I'm going to be working on the needle thread tension unit on Stella, the Singer Model 237. Now, when I did my storyboard for this series, I planned just to mention and talk a sh very shortly about the tension unit and give you links to a couple of other tension videos I have done because this type of tension unit is on dozens and dozens of Singer sewing machines. So um, I figured I could just refer you to other videos I've done about it. But w after I uh, cleaned and oiled and everything the tension unit, I realized it wasn't working properly. So I want to investigate what's what's wrong here. And just as a little bit of theory for some who may not um, know about this, but the presser bar lifter lever that lifts up the presser bar to raise the foot up off of the fabric you're sewing also has another function um, in, in the back here, if you, you see this uh, hinge screw here, when you lift it up, there's a tension releasing lever that's connected to the presser bar lifter. And you can see this um, black piece of metal swinging over towards the tension unit. And what that does when you raise it is it's supposed to press on a tension releasing pin that's inside right down the center of the tension unit and then that pin presses on some other parts that push back against the tension spring in here to take tension off of the discs so that when you when you pull your fabric out to cut the thread it, it easily comes out and also that's why they tell you to raise this up when you're going to thread the needle so that the thread can get in between the loose tension discs. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, usually back in here I can see about an eighth of an inch of the pin sticking out. And you can see the releasing lever strike the releasing pin and move it. And when that happens, you'll see this uh, tension disc release and separate just a little bit you know like a sixteenth of an inch but even with this raised up uh, and not seeing the pin these tension discs are being held firmly together by the tension spring inside so um, either the tension releasing pin is missing but more likely there's broken parts in here and this is pretty common even though a lot of people feel this is, uh, you know, one of the last all-metal machines, um, there are some plastic parts, including some plastic parts in the tension unit that are prone to breakage. So I thought I'm just going to film this while I find out what's wrong and try and figure out a solution. Because this could be common to not only the 237, but many other uh, models. So to take this off, I just start assembling it from the front. Now there is um, a set screw that's seated down in here that holds this unit in the machine. It's a set screw that goes up against what's called the tension post, which you'll see here in a little bit. And you can uh, loosen that set screw and you can pull this whole unit out in one piece if you want. But I'm going to disassemble here and kind of inspect these interior parts. And this particular one, this uh, chrome, we'll call it the tension thumb nut, you know, um, it goes into a, a little thing called the... Uh, tension indicator flange and that's also called the numerated flange because it's got your numbers from 0 to 9 
And to, to get off the thumb nut, this one does not have a set screw. You just push back on that flange to compress the, the uh, spring inside, get it away from the thumb nut, and then you can just easily unscrew the thumb nut. And the way that um, works together, see if I can show it here, is that there, <coughs> there is a small metal pin in this thumb nut that sits inside any of these little holes in the numerated or indicator flange. And that's made to adjust the tension when you zero it out. And then when you turn the thumb nut, it actually changes the tension on the unit and the pin prevents the thumb nut from just, you know, unscrewing when you're turning it left. The next thing is a stop washer. And it's, uh, let me pull it off here. See that little cross bar and it's got a little pointy finger on it. It's called the stop washer because it stops the spring from coming out. And it's got that little crossbar in the center because the tension stud that, that this unit is built on is split right down the middle uh, about two-thirds of the way so that you can put parts on there and they, they stay in the position you put them and they don't just twist around. So the stop washer is in normal condition. Here's the tension spring. I'll take that out. And um, it's also called the pyramid spring. And also it's called the beehive spring. And you see it's got the last coil is bent right across horizontally in the center for the same reason when you when you put it on there you want that cross piece to go inside the slot and that keeps the spring from from turning loosely this is the tension indicator people also just call it the the plus minus um, flange tension indicator flange but I see here right now a problem because this should have a cross bar across here. The same way those other little pieces had a cross bar. This should have a cross bar so when you put it on the plus minus stays in the same position. But this just uh, spins around. The other problem is um, that tension releasing pin that I talked about pushes on the cross member of the tension indicator flange and because the spring sits in there it's what moves and compresses the spring forward which will relieve tension on these discs. Now you can see these discs are loose and you could put thread and you could pull thread. So, um, I think my estimation was right. This plastic part has failed, which is pretty common on these. Um, you know, like the 301, the, well, let's say the slant needles from the 300 uh, through the 500 Rocketeers. These were all, <clears throat> these were all metal parts. And it's uncommon to see a failure. But many of the Singer models, when they use plastic, um, you know, they fail. They fail eventually because the, 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 the pin presses on that cross member every single time you raise the presser foot. And this machine was made in about 1970, so it's 48 years old. Um, I think some of the plastic made in that era, our time, our decade, is a little more brittle maybe than some modern plastics but anyway I've seen this before a lot of times you'll just see it cracked in the center and the pin kind of sneaks through the crack but on this one 
it is totally missing. I mean, it's just a clean, broken off, period. If you didn't know it was supposed to be there, you'd think the part was fine. Let's go ahead and take this uh, off the rest of this here. This is the uh, thread. Well, these kind of come off as a, as a unit here because they're wrapped with the spring. But let me do them in order. This is the thread take up spring thread guard. And just like uh, its description, it guards the thread take up spring. And this spring goes around it and around the tension disc. And this is what your thread checks against on the way up to the take up lever and down to the needle. It keeps that th uh, thread taut as it goes into the fabric. And that's called the check spring. And then these are your two tension discs, right? And when they're put together like that and the spring pushes on them, there's tension and the amount of tension is based on the, on the thumb nut and you know how tight you make that spring or how loose. But when you lift it, the pin is supposed to put the pressure off of the spring and then these, these just get loose so that the thread can go right through. But, uh, and then here's the tension post I talked about. I'm going to tilt the machine now and see if, if a tension pin slides out of here. Um, yeah, there it is right there. Okay, so there was no missing spring or anything. The plastic just broke on the tension indicator flange. Here's the little tension releasing pin I'm talking about. And it's kind of crimped at one end. And then this end is, is just smoothed off a little bit. And that's the end that goes first through that the tension releasing lever back there. Um, would whoop, push against and push it forward in the stud so it's fine it's in good shape everything else is in good shape except this tension indicator flange the plus minus piece so i've got to think about this a little bit and see is there some way to repair when they were cracked i've been able to repair them um, just by putting like a little flat piece of metal or wood on the inside with super glue just to rein, you know, reinforce that. But this is totally missing. And if I, I don't know if I can put a crossbar back here, I have to see if it will interfere with how the spring sits and also with how far it is from the pin. Because the pin is only going to go so far when you lift this up. And that, that travel length of the pin isn't adjustable. So i got to think about this. Come up with a solution. I may just have to replace it. or uh, But we'll see. So when I figure something out, I'll continue the video. Okay, here's what I've come up with for this um, uh, broken indicator plate. Let's see if I can let me get there. The one with the crossbar uh, missing through the center of that hole. Now, um, you, you can... I have fixed a couple of these where the center bar was there and just cracked right through the center. And I could do that by putting a sliver of metal or even a sliver uh, one time I broke up a little popsicle stick and and reinforced the back of that cross member by gluing a piece of wood or metal and I could make it small enough that it did not interfere with the spring um, function back here and it kept the same distance between the pin and the crossbar, so it functioned okay. But I have tried once with this completely missing 
uh, crossbar on a metal one because I, I wanted to save it. It was for a 401 and I just I just didn't have uh, much luck with coming up with something I felt was reliable. So I think I'm going to have to replace this. Now the other parts of the the tension unit were fine. I did I do see I have some flash uh, rust. I do have some flash rust uh, around on this spring because I left it on during the wash and dry. So I'm seeing, I don't know if it'll show up, but right in here, a little rust. So I've got to take care of that rust, but that's, that's not a big uh, problem. And the, the other parts of this attention unit were all good which is normally the case with these uh, plastic flanges is that the metal parts are good and the, the flanges are not. So you, I often see on eBay and Bonanza where these parts are for sale pretty cheap minus the flange and that's because they're probably broken. <laughs> Um, it can be a good uh, bargain because if you lose this uh, stop washer, that is you, that's uh, hard to find, and the thumb nuts sometimes on these units get lost. Um, you know they're in somebody's garage or storeroom, and the kids take them off, and so you know I can I can a lot of times buy a vintage used the metal parts for like five bucks so I usually buy a couple to have parts now I'm also uh, occasionally go on and look for reasonably priced vintage tension units and most of them are like this this is from a 401 and it's complete and I got lucky and it was about eight dollars so I bought it and I buy um, these ones for the slants 301 uh, 401 404s the rocketeers when, when i can find them at a at a very good price so i usually have two or three as uh, spares to to have parts and so forth um, here is a unit i bought uh, for a plastic machine i think it was a 457 and it did not have the cups, you know, it didn't have the plastic parts. And it was pretty cheap. But um, I looked around and I found one seller who still sells this part, kind of not specifically for this machine, but for several machines. I think it may be a lighter color. But I think it would work on this machine, and it's a dollar ninety-nine, and that's from um, So Classic. So Classic, and that's Jenny. I think she's in Ohio, and she still sells these. I couldn't find anybody else during my search. So uh, let me show you a picture of this. So I ordered a couple of these along with some other supplies. Um, I buy my electronic foot pedals from her and I buy the rubber feet for my slants from her because um, they're, they're a good price. I usually buy 24 at a time. So anyway, I just went ahead and ordered things I needed and added two of these. So we're going to see if they will work. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that they will. Now, she also had a, a, a complete replacement unit that should work for the 237. Um, now, it may need to be modified if the stud is too long, but I think it was $14.50. And there's other people on eBay that, um, and maybe Singer Online and Singer Parts Online, that sell these for well Jenny had 1450 and I saw them most of them are around 20 to 25 
so you could replace the whole unit you don't you don't get this little thread guide back here the metal part but you get everything else the stud the pin the complete unit um, so that that's an option and let me show you the picture on so classic of that okay so the, so there's another option but I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out for her uh, replacement for this to see but as I mentioned I, I do buy some um, use parts and one of them that I do have and I bought was it was a complete set for a model 513 and it's um, you know virtually the same as this 237 as I said earlier this type of tension unit is on dozens and dozens of their models um, with very slight um, variances right so mm, let me pull this out now wait I, I wanted to mention too I did find some used 237's from five dollars for a beat up rusty one to about twenty something for used vintage model 237 or 239 but I'm, I'm leery to buy those I've when they're plastic I've I've contacted the seller before and said hey give me a give me a, a close-up picture of this and they don't want to disassemble it you know for 15 or 20 bucks they don't want to be bothered and a couple of them have said hey if something's broken you know I'll ship it back and I'll refund but then I have to pay the shipping so I, I usually avoid plastic vintage ones but the seller of this uh, 513 had them had it completely dismantled with some close-up pictures and the most important part that's hard to replace is the indicator and this one is in good shape and and if I hold them up side by side you can see that they're pretty much the same the 513 is a little more beige in color than this off-white 237 but but the style and everything is pretty much the same so I'm going to use this as a temporary replacement while I'm working on the machine with the hopes that when I get the so classic dollar ninety nine from Jenny that it will work and I think it'll be if it may be lighter in color than the 237 but <clears throat> since I have both pieces of the 513 you know that are in good shape I'm going to use both of them so that the color matches because if I use the back of the 513 and the front of the 237 you can see the colors off a little bit so it's two-tone my wife said that it's fine because this is kind of two-tone with the you know with the face plate and stuff but eh, I'm just going to use the whole thing for now and then uh, see what arrives from so classic and when it does I'll make another little video and see what's what's happening so I have my replacement um, parts for this so I'm gonna be good I'm just gonna reassemble it and uh, later I'll zero it out when I'm doing other adjustments on the machine but um, you know what let me let me remove this rust real quick I'll grab my rust remover and show you just how I remove rust when you got these little rusty parts like this okay so the product that I use is also a crud cutter from Rust-Oleum product and it's called the must for rust this is a little eight ounce plastic bottle of it I think it's about five dollars I got mine at Home Depot it's uh, it's water-based and I know that there's other products a, a vapo rust I hear a lot about and and I don't know about them because I've never used them so I can't say one way or the other this is the first and one I tried and it worked great so I just I just kept using it 
and for a little rust like that's on this spring I'm just going to take a, a q-tip or, or a cotton bud and try and get a little bit on I think I got some on there and uh, see if I can get this where's that rusty spot it's over here now you could just dip this in and out but I thought I, I'd try and show you here you can I can just wipe this make sure that it gets in between the the spring get it a little wet you know what I'm going to just get it a little more wet so it's a little drippy and the cleaner will go will go down inside between those between those springs there we go just wipe that around and the rust is gone just like that so like I said this was the first one I ever used I saw it at the Home Depot it said crud cutter I liked their cleaner I said hey let me try that and I'm happy with it now I'm going to use it also on the inside of the a broken one just to show you the rust has stained from that spring has stained the indicator flange and if this flange was good I could go in here and wipe around on the plastic and remove that stain also now sometimes it gets embedded in the plastic and it won't it just won't come out but usually it will so that's my rust remover uh, product that I like the must for rust Ta -da. okay so I'll just show you a quick uh, reassembly here and like I said when I do the adjustment and stuff in the series by then I'll have the hopefully good replacement of that cup and I can show you whether it works or not and then show you how to zero it out so when we assemble this we have to make sure that our pin is inside and I can stick a little thing in there and lift this and it doesn't move so I don't have the pin in there and I don't have the pin here uh oh I got it oh here it is okay <laughs> easy to lose huh uh, there's a little tiny bit of rust on the end of that too so I'll go ahead and wipe that off okay now you can you can put a little oil in here if you want but it's a steel pin riding on an aluminum stud so and I don't like to take a chance of getting oil on the tension disc because then the the thread just slips through without tension so on this the rounded end goes in first and the flange end is pointed out at you and you can stick it right in the hole inside the slot and use something small to push it back all the way and then the way I test to, to see if the releasing lever and everything else is okay is just to lift it and see if it pushes out on my tool there and it does okay so I've got the pin in properly the next section is um, kind of a three or four parts put together here I have my two clean tension discs right so then I'm going to put the check spring thread guard over the front of those now maybe I, I forget sometimes I have to tell you this you see how you see how these are uh, dished like like a saucer so they have to fit like that to create a touching so it can pinch the thread and put tension on it if you put them cupped like this it will not work properly and if you put the dish portion out 
so that the edges are together it will not work properly so this is the proper way the the kind of like the bottom of the saucers together convex maybe those sides are so they go like that that way you can slip the thread in between there when you're threading the needle and because those two sides touch each other you apply tension then you put the check spring thread guard on there okay the front and then we're going to put the check spring around all this so the single coil goes towards you and the large coil goes towards the machine and if you look in here you see the last coil has a sharp 90 degree bend and what I'm going to call the spring tail right there and that tail goes in between the teeth on this little gear at the end of the stud and that's to prevent the spring from turning and to actually provide springing uh, motion so with the single coil in the front and the large coil in the back I'm going to slide it on the stud making sure nothing gets in the slot here everything in my hands goes around the stud okay so I've just got it on enough to hold everything because I want to show you a good place to start with your check spring tension is so that when you put this onto the machine this loop of the check spring is going straight down that's a very good place to start so don't worry so much about where the tail is or what gear it's going into in the back get this so that it's straight down and then you're going to slide everything on and the tail will go in between a couple of the gear teeth and this um, stud that sticks from the top goes in this little hole right there that's what keeps this from turning so we'll get it all lined up and we'll gently push it back and into the hole and there's my little loop straight down and my thread guard stud going in the hole in the machine now we have to get this spring up on the spring rest this little uh, pointy end out here and this is a very good time to do it before you put the other parts on so hold the assembly and just fold that string up and tuck it up here on the rest see how that now has a spring motion because that spring tail is preventing the whole spring from turning okay then we'll put our indicator plus minus and I suggest you put the plus minus up so you can read it perfect huh and then we're gonna put our clean non rusted tension spring in there and there's um, some debate over the little loop half coil here whether it goes at the bottom like a teacup or whether it goes up like the letter E I really haven't found it made any difference on any of the tension units I restored so I usually put it down and I don't know why now I need my little stop washer so that spring won't won't come off and if you they all have a finger if it's a pointed finger like this point the finger towards you uh, many of them now also just have a straight up finger it's not it's not like curled over so if it's straight it doesn't matter if it is a uh, bent like that 
point the little tip towards you. Okay. Now we're going to put the numerated dial or flange on there. That goes over that. And you see how that stop washer um, is held in place by this dial. Then the last thing we're going to do is put the adjusting thumb nut on. And uh, even though I'm not going to zero it out, what I usually do is put it so that about the number two is up. The reason that stop washer has a finger is because inside here there's a little nub and that is a stop so that when you're turning it left to right it goes from you know zero to nine but it doesn't keep spinning. So to be sure that the little stop nub is to the right of the finger just set it up there with about the number two pointed up okay then take your I just use my thumb and I push that back against the spring and then I put on the adjusting thumb screw with that little pin facing the dial because that pin's going to go in one of the holes. And then I'll just gently turn it until it pops into a hole. Now I'm going to test. If I go left, the stop screw is hitting the nub by the zero and it's stopping at zero. If I go to the right, I can turn it and turn it. Oh, I have it a little tight. I can't even get to nine. So it's a little tight. Now let me back it out a little bit. So I push that. That's the nice thing about these with the pin. It's so easy to adjust. Push back against the spring to loosen it. Turn the thumb screw left a little bit. Find another hole. Okay, if I go left, it stops at zero. If I go right, it stops at nine. So I've got my pin and everything proper, okay? Now, let's, let's uh, test here to see if the lever and the pin and, every, and my assembly is working. We should see this move out as we lift the wheel. Uh-oh. I'm not seeing it coming out. Yep, so the wheel is not hitting the pin. Even though it did before, and I know what that means. That means that this dial, this indicator flange, is too far away from the pin. It's not pushing the pin back far enough for the tension release can you see? remember that tension release lever comes over and pushes on the pin it's not reach it's it's let's see if it's reaching the pin hang on yeah it it should be it's not bent or anything which which can happen the pin can the lever can be bent and missing the pin but this is dead on the pin but the pin is only sticking out a, less than a 64th of an inch. And it should be showing about an eighth of an inch. So that's telling me that this um, indicator flange, the way it's made, is too far away from the pin. It's, it doesn't push the stop washer and the pin and everything back. So let me take this off. Let me take that off. Let me take the stop washer and spring off. Let me make sure that I didn't get the small loop. 
of the check spring into the slot. Nope. Let me put my little tool in there and lift again. Yeah. See, I can see it moving my stick. Have I got something else I can... See if I got something here. Let me put this little uh, tension screwdriver in here on this side and lift that lever. Can you, can you see that moving? See how it pushes that out? So all of this is assembled properly. So the problem is this is slightly different than this. That's the only thing I can think of why it doesn't work. Let's try again. I've got everything in there the same way. Make sure that my... Make sure, maybe my post slipped out while I was putting this together. Let's, let's see. Oop. So I've got my assembly. I have the thread guard post going in the hole for sure this time. I'll put this on. Now right now I should be able to move that with the pin. See? And it's just not happening. It's just not... When I lift that up it should push this forward a little bit. So the pin is not reaching the cross bar. Too bad. This must be a little deeper than the other. Okay. So my options now would be to take a finishing nail and cut it a little bit longer so that it would reach this and play around with it till I got it to work. And that's, that's the problem with trying to uh, repair some of these or use other parts, you know. Um, the other thing I could do is maybe cut off the back of the post so the post set in farther to move it closer. But I, I, I wish you could see this, but really the pin is just barely, barely sticking out. Not, not normally. So I'm going to put this back together so I don't lose the parts. And I'm going to wait for the replacement um, part, the $2 part that I ordered to see if that will fix. So I hope this video was worth your time even though I didn't come to a final solution. Uh, we will it also tells you what to look for and some of the possibilities and if you're out looking to buy a vintage uh, singer or you inherited one um, you know it's very quick and easy to check the tension and you should see it release if you don't it tells you you have a problem with the seller's permission if necessary, you could open this up to see, is this broken? Is the pin missing? What, what is it? Maybe it's just real dirty and you just clean it and it's fine. When I get the new part from So Classic, uh, I'll make another video and we'll see if we can get this working and then I'll show you how to zero out the tension so that it works properly. Thanks for watching this uh, video about Stella, the Model 237, and her tension problems. And I hope to see you on the next video in the series. Take care.